Hi, and welcome to AP Microeconomics. My name is Ms. Hayakamo, and I will be teaching you this course. So why take AP Microeconomics? Well, you get to have the opportunity to earn college credit based on your AP score. You get to demonstrate to college admission officers that you have a greater potential for academic success in college than non-AP students. We introduce to you the principles of economics that apply to the functions of individual economic decision makers. You get to develop your familiarity with the operation of product and factor markets, distributions of income, market failure, and the role of government in promoting greater efficiency and equity in the economy. And you get to learn to use graphs, charts, and data to analyze, describe, and explain economic concepts. Throughout this course, you would develop certain AP economic skills. The first skill category would be to define economic principles and models and identify an economic concept, principle, and model using uh, an example and using quantitative data or calculations and to describe similarities, differences, and limitations of economic concepts, principles, and models. The second skill category would be interpretation, which is to explain given economic outcomes, which is basically using economic concepts, principles, and models to explain how specific economic outcome occurs or what actions should be taken in order to achieve a specific outcome. And you would use these concepts or models um, to explain a specific outcome when there are multiple contributing variables or what multiple actions should be taken to achieve a certain outcome. And you would interpret this information using quantitative data or calculations. The third skill category would be manipulation, which is to determine outcomes of specific economic situations. So you determine the outcome of the situation using economic models or concepts, and you would determine the effects of one or more changes of economic markets, and you would also determine it using quantitative data or calculations. The fourth skill category, which is very important, which is graphing and visuals. So to model economic situations using graphs or visual representations, which entails drawing an accurately labeled graph or visual to represent an economic model or market, demonstrating your understanding of a specific economic situation using an accurately labeled graph or visual to demonstrate the effect of a change in an economic situation on an accurately labeled graph or visual. These skills would be applied throughout the units in microeconomic uh, course, which are six units. We'll start with the basic economic concepts, which entails scarcity, um, resource allocation, graphing of the PPC, the production possibilities curve, and we'll move to cost-benefit analysis, the comparative advantage, which is also very important, and then we'll move to the main concepts of supply and demand, which entails also graphing, uh, types of price elasticity of, dem uh, of demand and supply, market equilibrium, disequilibrium, the effects of government interventions in markets and international trade. Then we'll move to production costs in the short run and the long run, types of profit and profit maximization, firms' decision making in the short run and the long run. And then we'll move to product markets, which are perfect competition, monopoly model, the price discrimination, and then we'll move to uh, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and we'll learn about game theory. And then from product markets, we'll move to factor markets, and we'll apply it to the labor market, and we'll learn about the changes in factor market to supply and demand, profit maximization behavior in the factor market, and we'll learn about the imperfect competition um, model of factor market, which we call it the monopsonistic market. And we'll end with market failure and the role of government in intervening in market failure. So we'll learn what does it mean, socially efficient versus inefficient market outcomes, what are externalities, the types of goods we have, public and private goods, and the effect of government intervention in different market structures, and we'll end it with inequality. 
The resources we'll be using is the main textbook by Amschooled Advanced Placement for Microeconomics here. We have a PDF version of the Princeton's Review, AP Economics, which includes micro and macro. And of course, on a daily basis, we'll be using AP Microeconomics, AP Classroom, and um, AP Central, um, which are AP um, endorsed websites. And um, there's a YouTube channel by uh, Advanced Placement and other resources that I find very useful, um, YouTube channels or websites that very much follow the AP course description and um, AP course. How AP exams are scored? While the MCQ questions are scored by machine, the free response questions are scored by thousands of college faculty and expert AP teachers. Now, scores on the free response questions and performance assessments are weighted and combined with the results of the computer scored MCQs. And this row score is converted into a composite AP score on a one to five scale. AP exams, however, are not norm referenced or graded on a curve. Instead, they are criterion referenced, which means that every student who meets the criteria for an AP score of 2, 3, 4, or 5 will receive that score no matter how many students that is. Using and interpreting AP scores, the scores on the AP ranges from 1 to 5, 1 being the lowest and 5 the highest. 5 is interpreted as a solid A, extremely well qualified. 4 is well qualified based on a um, range from A- minus to B. And that is based on whether it's a high 4 or a low 4. 3 is qualified, which ranges from B- minus to C. 2 is possibly qualified and 1 is not recommended. When it comes to college credit, how the score is um, basically received and calculated, well, we've got two sections, the multiple choice section and the free response. Um, the total score is a weighted average of the two sections. Uh, each multiple choice question, which are 60, they receive one point. And then the free response question, you've got three questions. The first one has higher weight than the other two because it's a longer question that the two free response questions that follow are shorter and they have lower weight and then the the two sections are added together to receive your score out of five um the the ranges here are based on the, the previous ap exam but the ranges from each ap exam year to, to the next that are pretty much similar they change by a small uh, percentage. And as you can see, uh, there's a big range to receive a five or a four. The exam date for the 2024 exam uh, is on Tuesday, May 7th. And the exam format, as we said, we have two sections, multiple choice, 60 questions. You've got one hour and 10 minutes, so that's 70 minutes and it's 66% of the exam score, that's two thirds. Questions require you to use economic content, knowledge and reasoning across the range of course topics and skills in skill categories one, two, three that we discussed above. The free response section entails three questions. You've got one hour, it includes 10 minute reading time and it's 33% of your exam score, that's one third. It starts with one long free response question. Usually there's graphing in it, almost always. It's 50% of the section score. And it follows by two short free response questions. Each is 25% of the section score. You will be asked to make assertions about economic concepts, principles, models, outcomes, and or effects. Explain economic concepts, principles, models, outcomes, or effects, basically performing certain calculations and of course creating graphs, visual or visual representations. Thank you. I am very much looking forward for our journey together and for a successful academic year.